Assalamu alaikum guys, how are you all doing? In this video we'll be looking at how to work with numeric data and we'll go through some operators that can be applied with numbers. Now from my first tutorial I mentioned about the two numeric data types, integers which present whole numbers and floats that present decimal numbers. You can check a numbers data type with a built-in function in Python called type where if I put in a number and print this to the console it'll show us the data type for the number 5 which is of the class integer. Similarly for decimal numbers with 5.0 here when I run this its data type shows up here as a float. You could also use the type function with strings and other data types so it's a pretty nice function and quite useful for many programming tasks within Python. Now you can see that I've put up a reference section here on arithmetic operations and yes, I haven't mentioned about comments before, but this is how you can display text that aren't read as lines of code in Python scripts by applying hashtag at the start here, which converts any text after it to non-code text, i.e. comments. And you can document your code with comments or just mention them for any other reason. Cool. So let's go through these arithmetic cases. The first one's for addition, which is simply applied with the plus operator between numbers. Printing this out will show us the result for 5 plus 2, which is 7. Similarly, for subtraction, I could apply the minus operator here, and when I run this, we'll get the answer as 3 printed out here. If I were to swap the numbers and then print the result, we'll get the result as a negative 3, since we're, of course, subtracting 2 from 5. Pretty straightforward so far. Let's change the numbers back. We could also do multiplication with the star operator here and when I run this we'll get the product for the numbers as the answer 10 in the integer form here. And to apply division we can use a forward slash here so when I run this we should get the answer as 2.5 in the console. Nice. So the division we've done here is actually called true division in Python and that means the answer we'll get will always be in the float form if a forward slash were to be applied in any calculation. So when I applied the previous operators, plus, minus, and multiplication with the two integers 5 and 2, the answer we always got was a whole number, i.e. integer, but whenever we apply the forward slash or true division with integers or floats or any type, the answer we'll always get will be of the float type. All right. So you may already be familiar with the first four arithmetic cases. The next operators are going to be a bit more interesting. So we have the floor division next with two forward slashes that can be treated as another division operator. Just that it always gives the result to the nearest integer. So let's try this with our example from the reference. When I print this out, you can see that our result is 2. And normal division would have given us an answer 2.5. But with the floor division here, we'll instead get a result to the nearest integer, and that is 2 in the integer form here. Moving to the next operator, the double star. This is known as the exponent, and it's used for applying exponents to numbers. So in maths, you might be familiar with applying a base number to the power of some number. I could do the same here with the base of 5 to the power of 2 with the double star, and when I print this out, you'll get the answer as 25 in the console. Sweet. So this is one of the ways of applying exponents in Python. Now moving to the last arithmetic operator here known as modulus. It's presented with the percent sign between numbers and this one just returns the remainder of our division. So in this case 5 is divided by 2. We would know that the division here gives us a value of 2.5 and the result when printed out will be the remainder of 1 here as you can see in the console. So that's how modulus is used. When applying a number as a modulus to another number, imagine replacing the percent sign with a division and when we're dividing the numbers, the remainder that we get will actually be our answer. So if I were to try 4 modulus 2 or 4 mod 2, we'd get the answer as 0 since there is no remainder that we'd get given that 4 is a multiple of 2 here. Alright, and if you know about odd and even numbers, we can actually check if a number is odd or even with the modulus operator. So let's try this with numbers 1 to 6, each with a modulus of 2. Just setting them all to the print function here. 
So let's now print this out. You'll see a binary pattern here in the console. So we first have a division with 1 by 2 from which we get a remainder of 1. The next one is 2 mod 2 where when 2 divided by 2 we get no remainder hence it's a 0. And as we move down the numbers you can see a pattern that every multiple of 2, 2, 4, 6 all with a modulus of 2 applied gives us the remainder 0 while the rest of the numbers give a remainder of 1. So we can categorize these zeros and ones as even and odd numbers respectively where we'd know that one here is odd, two is even, three is odd and going about the same for the rest of the numbers. Awesome. Now I've mostly gone through some basic arithmetic examples for integers. There's one thing to note regarding calculations with a mix of both data types, ints and floats. If I were to, for example, apply the same addition again with five and two but instead I convert the number 2 into a decimal number here and when I print this out we'll get the same answer as before but we have to notice that its data type is now of the float type and this would be the case for every arithmetic problem in Python where if a float number is involved in the problem then the result we get from it would always be in the form of a float so let's test this out with all the examples here we can first try doing so with the examples having integers only, the fives and twos, and while we're at it, we might as well make our printed result look nicer by adding text labels and their data types. With the formatted string to add my results in, and also printing their data type besides them by applying the type function for each print here, and once I've completed this, print this out to the console, and you can see that for each example result, we have our integer results and their data types right next to them of the class integer. But in the case of our true division section, we can see that it's of the float type. Awesome. Now going back to our examples, we would like to see the involvement of an integer and a float in each case. And let me just change the number fives in each case into a decimal number. And once that's applied, you'll see that for each case we get the type float as a result. So in contrast to our previous run with just integers, we can see that whenever a float number is involved in any arithmetic case, then our returning result will always be of the type float. But in the case of true division in either of these runs, it didn't matter what data type you used, even if they were just integers or not, you would always get the answer as a float number with division here. So these are some things to keep in mind regarding the change in the numeric data type during operations like these. Now I'll talk a little bit about the different order of operations. Let's go with the case of 5 plus 2 divided by 7 here. Normally we'd see the arithmetic applied division first, so you'd have the number 5 added to the result of 2 divided by 7, and we'll get a long float number here in the console. Even if there was a minus sign instead of the plus here, multiplication, division, and the other operators take precedence over addition and subtraction steps. However, if we apply parentheses on the addition part here, then whatever is in our brackets would be applied first before the other operations. Therefore, we'd have 7 divided by 7 here, which will give us the answer 1 in the console. If we instead replaced the plus with a star, we'd see this arithmetic apply the multiplication part first, 5 times 2, then its result of 10 as an integer is divided by the integer 7, giving us the decimal number here in the end. One thing to note is if the operators were swapped here, then division would have applied first because that's the first operator being applied. So except for addition and subtraction, the chronological order of operations in our arithmetic case would matter, where whichever operator placed first in our problem would then first be applied, and then the next one is given priority, and so on. To give an example, let's say we had a problem involving all the operators with a star, forward slash, double slash, and modulus, but excluding the plus and minus because we know that addition and subtraction steps would be given the least priority because they would be involved with the other operators here. And now when I try to solve the problem, we'll see that multiplication is given priority first, so we'll have 7 times 6, which is 42 and then division takes place immediately after with 42 divided by 5 which gives us 8.4 and then the floor division is given priority where 8.4 with the floor division of 4 happens giving us the output 2 
and then finally we apply 2 as a modulus to 3. So taking 2 mod 3 and we'll finally get our answer as the remainder of 2 as the float type. Awesome. So we've just covered on arithmetic operators, we'll now discuss on assignment operators. These types of operators are used for assigning values to variables. Let's say if I had a variable name num1 assigned to 5 and another variable num2 assigned to 24.5. If I wanted to update my variable's value, I could simply reassign a value to it. Say if I updated the variable num1 by adding 2 to it, then I could simply apply this like num1 equals num1 plus 2 and when I print the previous value and the updated one accordingly you'll see that the old value was 5 and the new value for num1 is 7. Now we could make updating variables a lot easier with assignment operators where in the case shown here with adding 2 to num1 I could shorten this expression by using an assignment operator called plus equals and this in Python would be read exactly the same as how we applied num1 equals num1 plus 2. So this is a shorter version of the last expression. And when I print this out, you'll see that we get the same answer 7 as we did before with the longer expression. And basically by including any of the arithmetic operators with the equal sign as done here, would update the value by that arithmetic type. So say with num2 I could apply num2 minus equals 0.5 which after printing this would give us just 24 since the assignment here means num2 equals num2 minus 0.5 taking out the 0.5 here. Awesome. I could also use the multiplication star here where let's say I update the num1 again but by multiplying it by 2. So applying this here would give us the number 10 in the console as you can see it. Also trying out with modulus here for num2 by adding the modulus equals to 5 and printing this gives us the answer of a remainder 4.5 in the console. That comes from the calculation of num2 modulus of 5. Alright. And you can also apply the same for the division and exponent operators if you'd like to use them. Alright. So these assignment operators just make updating variable values a lot easier. And when we use them while programming in Python, you'll get to see that it just makes code look a bit more efficient. Awesome. Now we've discussed in length about operators and how they're used with numbers, specifically of two categories. One was about the arithmetic operators and the other was on assignment operators. There are actually more category of operators that can be used with numbers and other data types. And I'll be covering over the other types of operators in the next tutorial where you'll get to see an involvement of both numbers and strings in operations. Should be interesting. Alright, for the last part of this video, I'll be discussing some built-in Python functions that you could use with numbers. I'll start with casting functions. So let's say I wanted to convert a float number to an integer number, and I want this applied on my float number num2, 24.5. We could accomplish this quite simply by wrapping a function around our number by the name of int, i.e. integer, and this function should convert 24.5 to a whole number 24. So when I print this out, you'll see that we do get an output of 24 as an integer here. Quite easy, yes? If you're guessing that, we could also convert integer numbers to floats quite simply by applying some function called float, then you are absolutely correct. 100 marks for that. So let's test this with our num1 of integer 5 around the float function. And when I print this out, you'll get a float of 5.0 as a result. Sweet. So these are known as casting functions, which are used for converting one data type to another. And we could also convert strings to integers or floats and vice versa. So let me make a new variable string assigned to a string of 100. And let's use it with some different casting situations. So I can show the conversion of a string to an integer with a nice print. Let's add my string, its data type, and the conversion of the string to int, and the new data type. You'll see that indeed we get our string 100 converted to an actual integer of 100, as shown in our print output here. Nice. And this could be applied the same way for converting to a float with the float function. But one thing to note is that 
Strings can only be converted to an integer or float by these casting functions if and only if the string contains numbers and no other text. So if I added an alphabet in our string 100 here and run the program, you'll see that the error pops up here where the string didn't successfully cast to an integer. So that's one thing to keep in mind regarding casting strings to numbers. And if we wanted to do it the other way around by converting numbers to strings, just like our int and float functions, we can have a string function by str that can be wrapped around a number, say num2 here, and let's print it out with its data type as well. You'll see that we get 24.5 in the console, but as a string data type as shown here. Cool. So that was about casting. The next one I'll mention is the round function. So you're probably familiar with rounding numbers in maths, be it by certain decimal or significant figures. We could round any number by using the round function. So I can apply this with both num1 and num2 here by wrapping them with round. And printing this out gives us our values in integer and float form respectively. So we can only see the difference for num2 here that has been rounded up to 24. And basically the round function automatically rounds numbers to the nearest whole number. So let's change num1 to a float 5.786 and also tweak num2 a bit as 24.567. Now when I apply the round function to our numbers, I can also apply an option of decimal places where I could put in say a number 2 here in the round function as a second parameter which should be read as taking the round of the number by two decimal places. So when I print them out you'll see that both the numbers are now rounded up. So for num1 it's rounded up to 5.79 and num2 is rounded up to 24.57. Quite nice. Now I'll mention the next function known as power or POW within brackets. This function simply applies an exponent to a number and returns the end value. So the first parameter will be the base number and the second parameter will be the exponent. Trying this out with a base of 8 to the power of 2. When I print this out we'll get the answer as 64 here in the console. Nice. So this is another way of applying exponents to numbers besides the double star operator. And now I'll go on to the next math function. So this is called ABS which stands for absolute value. And it does exactly that, returns the absolute value of a given number. So trying this out with the number 8 and maybe also with negative 8. When I print this out you'll see that our absolute values of 8 are returned here accordingly. Quite straightforward. Another simple math function called sum takes an iterable containing numbers and returns the sum of the numbers. Now you may not know about iterables yet and they will be a topic for a future tutorial but basically the sum function here can take in multiple numbers as long as these numbers are contained inside what is called an iterable which could be in the form of normal brackets as one example. So applying sum to an iterable containing num1 and num2 within brackets here and when I print this we'll get the sum of our numbers in the console here as 30.353. Alright. The last function to mention is divmod and this is a sweet function that does the job of two operators. It basically returns two values, the coefficient and the remainder of a division problem. Our division problem would be described within the divmod function as two parameters. The first parameter will be the dividend and the second parameter will be the divider. So testing this with div mod of 5 and 2 where this takes our problem of 5 divided by 2. When I run this it will give the output of two numbers. The first value in the brackets shown is the quotient which is a result of the floor division of 5 by 2. The value on the right within brackets is the result of applying 5 modulus 2. And now you can see what the div mod function does exactly here, which is quite neat. Awesome. So these were the functions I wanted to cover in this last video segment. And besides built-in functions, you'll get to see later on that we can also make our own custom functions for applying some math or any other action with data types. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you found this video useful and 
Hope you gained some knowledge about some of the ways of working with numbers in Python. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like or a subscribe and stay tuned for the next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and assalamu alaikum.